Hey friends, it's Masood. Welcome back to Med School Moose. This is going to be a refreshed version of USMLE Step 1, High Yield Images Part 4. Remember, these are images that are very important that are very likely to show up on test day for both the USMLE Step 1 and Comlex Level 1. So definitely make sure that you're watching all of these videos. If you haven't had a chance yet, I'm going to link Part 3 of this series right up here so that you can check that out as well. Real quick before we get started, I just wanted to let everyone know about my brand new newsletter, Sunday Morning Rounds. Every Sunday you can receive some amazing high quality content directly to your inbox, including things like study tips for the USMLE and for other board exams, as well as for medical school classes, productivity hacks, how to get your work done faster and more efficiently, and helpful advice for a ton of other topics like applying for residency, interviewing for residency, the match process, how to be successful in residency, so many different topics. If you've been following this channel for a long time, you know that all I want to do is create high yield content for medical students and residents, and this Sunday Morning Rounds newsletter is the latest iteration of that. I'll leave the link in my description below. Take a look. Consider signing up for that. I would really appreciate it. Right now, I'm working on some awesome articles for residency interviewing and the match process, so if you're going through that, you definitely want to sign up so that you can get all of those updates. That being said, let's go ahead and get started. First image here, we're going to be starting off with a lovely arrow sign on a lateral neck x-ray. And what we're looking at here is what's called a thumb sign. If you can see this right here, it kind of looks like a thumb right there. And really what that's a sign of is it's seen in epiglottitis. So if we have a patient, particularly a pediatric patient, that's having respiratory distress and we're able to get a lateral neck x-ray, we see this abnormality, we see this thumb sign, we want to be thinking about epiglottitis. Not as common anymore with some of the vaccines that kids get, but definitely something that you need to be aware of. This is a big airway problem if a child has this on x-ray. Moving on, a lucky day, we have another arrow sign right here. We have a, a structure and we're pointing to a particular part of it that we need to identify. This is the substantia nigra. This is a really important one to know. Know the image, know the structure, and know the significance of this. So this right here is the substantia nigra. The reason that this is so important is because depigmentation of the substantia nigra and loss of neurons, you can see kind of here the discoloration, how it's lightly colored compared to this right here. Depigmentation of the substantia nigra is seen in patients with Parkinson's disease. So a lot of high yield things here. Let's break it down one more time. If you see this image, you see this structure, they're pointing at this. First of all, you need to know that's the substantia nigra. Compare this to this right here. It's a little bit lighter. That's depigmentation of the substantia nigra. That is also high yield. And then the third part of that, that is something that is seen in Parkinson's disease. Very, very high yield to know this picture and know all of the associations with it. Moving on to some histology, uh, we have an example of clue cells here. What we're looking at is some vaginal epithelial cells, and they're covered in that bacteria, the Gardnerella, which is the cause of bacterial vaginosis. So if we see this, one big cell covered in some smaller cells, covered in Gardnerella like that, we want to be thinking clue cells, and we want to be thinking bacterial vaginosis have a chest x-ray here, which hopefully you can appreciate that this is severely abnormal. And what we're looking at, this is an example of pulmonary fibrosis. What we're seeing here is there's some bilateral and diffuse pattern of small reticulonodular opacities. You can kind of see it primarily in the lower lobes, kind of right down here. Uh, and what we're seeing there, that's just damage of the lungs, unfortunately, these opacities. Something that's seen in pulmonary fibrosis, a scarring of the lung can cause a lot of respiratory issues. If you see a chest x-ray like this, highly abnormal, you want to be thinking about pulmonary fibrosis. Back to some histology, we see a kind of a strange bright blue stain on this histology slide. But what we're looking at is hemochromatosis. And particularly what we're looking at, this is a Prussian blue stain that is used to distinguish iron, which is all of this blue here, from other structures like lipofusin. So if you see a stain like this, a histology slide like this, that is just absolutely lit up with blue, that's a ton of iron deposition, and we want to be thinking about hemochromatosis with that picture. Now we have an x-ray with multiple arrow signs here. We're looking at an x-ray of a bone, probably a limb, and really what we need to be looking at here is this edge, how it's kind of peeled off, kind of layering off. That should tip you off that this is an example of Ewing sarcoma. Remember, Ewing sarcoma is a pretty aggressive cancer, and one of the hallmarks that we can see on x-ray imaging if you can kind of appreciate it right here is this onion skin appearance, that kind of peeling off of the bone that can be seen with Ewing sarcoma. Really important to know that. This image is super high yield. Hopefully you can identify this one right off the bat. There's nothing else that looks like this. This is an example of Giardia lamblia. More specifically, this is an example of the trophozoite. Remember, this is the cause of giardiasis, one of those nasty infectious diarrheas. Uh, but like I said, nothing else looked like this. You've probably seen this on other images, on Sketchy, that kind of thing. Commit this to memory. If you see this image, it's Giardia lamblia. 
More high yield histology here. We see some elongated structures off in the top right hand corner. We see kind of some like ball like structures kind of in the middle there. And what we're looking at here is Malassezia furfur. This is the classic, what we call spaghetti and meatballs appearance. Here's your spaghetti, here's your meatballs right there that is seen in a KOH prep under microscopy. So if you see something like this, there's some elongated structures, that's your spaghetti. There's these kind of rounded meatball-like structures, those are your meatballs. You wanna be thinking about Malassezia furfur. Continuing with some more histology here and another lovely arrow sign, we see this very well-defined circular structure within this cell here. And what we're looking at is an example of Lewy body. This is an eosinophilic cytoplasmic inclusion within neurons, and we can see this in Parkinson disease as well as, of course, Lewy body disease dementia. So if you see an image like this, they're talking about an elderly patient, give you this histology slide. There's this somewhat darkened kind of circular appearing structure in a cell. We want to be thinking about Lewy body Parkinson disease as well as Lewy body dementia. Next image here, we have this kind of crystal like structure. This is actually an example of a Bence Jones protein. Commit this image to memory. It's very unique, but the high yield thing to know about Bence Jones proteins, these are seen in multiple myeloma. Important to know that. Back to some histology, we have what looks like a vessel here. There's a lot of pink kind of going on right there. And what we're looking at is a hyaline arteriosclerosis. There's sclerosis of the vessel. We have a lot of buildup of tissue kind of causing thickening, hardening of that vessel. So really important histology slide to know. This is a cross-section of hyaline arteriosclerosis. All right, now we're doing a fundoscopy exam. Hopefully you can appreciate this is pretty abnormal. A lot of abnormalities going on along the outer rim right here. And what we're looking at, this is an example of retinitis pigmentosa. This is described as bone spicule shaped deposits around the macula. Hopefully you can appreciate that right here. There's a very clear, beautiful one right there. If you see something like this on a fundoscopy exam, the diagnosis is going to be retinitis pigmentosa. Moving on here to some more histology, this is going to be an example of renal clear cell carcinoma. Hopefully you can appreciate these are pretty empty cells, not a lot of cytoplasmic inclusions in them. If you see this, you want to be thinking renal clear cell carcinoma. Now we have what looks like an MRI of the brain. We have a very obvious circular abnormality here. It's the only one that we're seeing that we're appreciating. This is an example of a ring enhancing brain lesion. The important thing to know here if you see a single one of these, you want to be thinking CNS lymphoma, so a cancer. If you see multiple of these ring-enhancing lesions, you want to be thinking toxoplasmosis, especially in patients with HIV or AIDS. Again, single ring-enhancing brain lesion in a patient with AIDS, we want to be thinking CNS lymphoma. Multiple ring-enhancing lesions in the patients with AIDS, we want to be thinking about toxoplasmosis. Really high-yield image here. Getting back to some histology here, you're going to keep seeing it because it's so high-yield. What we're looking at, this is an example of what we call heart failure cells. Really what we're looking at here, these are hemosiderin-laden macrophages seen in the alveoli. We see all of these hemosiderin deposits in the alveoli of the lungs. That is obviously very abnormal. If we see that, we want to be thinking about heart failure cells. Moving on, this is another high yield structure. Nothing really looks like this. Hopefully you can appreciate this kind of looks like a circular structure, maybe a Ferris wheel, maybe one might say a captain's wheel. This is an example of paracoccidioides. And, and what we're looking at here is we're looking at multiple budding yeasts off of the main one here. And it does have what's called that captain's wheel appearance of formation. One high yield point to know about this paracoccidioides, aside from the structure, it is larger than red blood cells. So if you see something like this on a peripheral smear compared to red blood cells, they will be much smaller this is paracoccidioides. Speaking of here, we have a peripheral smear and we can hopefully obviously appreciate these very abnormal cells compare a somewhat more rounded kind of like smooth cell like this to these jagged irregular cells. These are examples of echinocytes, also known as a Burr cell. And what we're looking at, these are red blood cells with a thorny appearance. You can definitely appreciate that. It is seen in patients with a few different things. It could be a pyruvate kinase deficiency. It could be uremia, patients with severe end-stage renal disease could also be things like microangiopathic hemolytic anemia and sometimes just mechanical damage of the red blood cells themselves. So really high yield to know what the shape of this, the name of it, echinocyte, aka Burr cell, and some of the uh, disease processes that are associated with this. Here we have a CAT scan. This one's a little bit more difficult, but if you take a good look here, one thing that you should be able to appreciate is that the heart is, is sitting pretty tightly in the pericardium, and the pericardium is kind of like lit up with white around there. So what are we looking at here? This is an example of constrictive pericarditis. A couple things going on. There's a lot of calcification on the outer rim of the pericardium here, which is why this is all white. I mean, it looks the same color as bone, 
compared to some of the other structures here. And there's also not a lot of space for the heart. The heart is abutting right up against that. It's constricted in that. So this is an example of constrictive pericarditis. Getting back to an arrow sign here with some histology, what we're looking at, these are examples of neurofibrillary tangles. What these are, these are protein aggregates in neurons from hyperphosphorylation of tau protein. Why is this high yield? Well, this is seen in Alzheimer's patients. So a lot of neurodegenerative stuff with these high yield images here. So if you see this image, it kind of has like a, a comet shaped appearance. It's an accumulation of tau protein within neurons causing these tangle like structures. And this is seen in Alzheimer's disease. Important to know that. All right, now we can go ahead and test your knowledge. Here's the image. Let me know in the comments, what structure is this that we're looking at? And what is the disease process associated with this? I will pin the correct answer to the comments below. So definitely be sure to check that out, test your knowledge, see where you're at. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you got value out of these videos, please leave me a like, leave me a comment, let me know how I'm doing. Share this video with other people studying for boards, help as many people as we can, that's the goal here. And be sure to subscribe to my channel and subscribe to Sunday Morning Rounds. I'm gonna leave the entire USMLE Step 1 High Yield Images playlist right here, so you can check that out. Thank you so much for watching as always, and good luck studying.